How's it going, my awesome people? It's the Welsh King here with a brand new type of YouTube video. Today I decided I want to try something slightly different from reviews, so I decided I'd have a go at making a top 10. So here I am with the top 10. But what is the top 10, I hear you ask? Well, it's the top 10 video games that have the most meaning to my life. Just bear in mind three things about this list. Number one. To get onto this list, these games have to have some kind of connection, whether it be awesome or random with my life. Number two, this is my list, so I'm sure your opinions will differ compared to mine. And number three, I know you've probably heard this a thousand and one times before, but one game per franchise because it gives some balance to the list. Anyway, so enough dilly-dallying, it's time to start this thing. So starting off at number 10 is Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation 2. But hang on a second, I know what you're thinking. Don't all movie licensed games suck? I mean, look at E.T. Well, not really. In fact, I'll let you in for a little secret. There are a few movie licensed games in this list. <laughs> but anyway, back to Spider-Man 2. This little gem doesn't suck whatsoever. In fact, it's pretty awesome. So this game was released to coincide with the movie, Spider-Man 2, as if that wasn't obvious enough, in 2004. And growing up, I was a massive Spidey fan, and that was until I discovered Iron Man and Deadpool, of course. And in those days, I was obsessed with Spider-Man. I mean, who wouldn't be obsessed with Spidey when they were seven? And by God, it is one of the best movie licensed games released in the last decade. And it's based off an equally good movie, nonetheless. So basically, this game allows you to live out the life of Spider-Man slash Peter Parker, from missing many of his dates with a beautiful Mary Jane Watson, to beating up enemies from small-time crooks, to Rhino, Mysterio, Shocker, and of course the main antagonist, Dr. Octopus. The visuals are good, the swinging mechanics are excellent, and all scenery is designed perfectly. From the civilian population, to cars, to the highest buildings in New York City, which by the way are really fun to skydive from. Number 9 is a fascinating choice, as is Spyro the Dragon, Season of Ice, for the Game Boy Advance. Sorry Crash Bandicoot 2 Entrance, we know you're on the same game cartridge, but this is about Spyro, not you. If you want to go see a review on that game, by the way, click over there. Anyway, so I'm no Spyro fan as such, but this game had me hooked from when I was a 7 year old kid. I remember I had to stay in hospital when I was about that age because I had to have my tonsils removed, because I couldn't eat basically anything at all. So while I was put up in hospital, this was my entertainment. Many hours were spent learning how to make Spyro glide through the air and help him on his quest. But what is this quest, of course? Well, Spyro's quest in this game follows on directly from Spyro Year of the Dragon. The sorceress, who is the main antagonist in Year of the Dragon, her entire army of Rhinox are left unemployed after she is defeated by Spyro. However, one of these Rhinox is Grendor, who is now a librarian in the Library of Parts and Knowledge. He steals the sorceress spellbook from Bianca and attempts to use a spell to make him more intelligent. The spell backfires as it accelerates his growth and he gains a second head. As a result, he gets massive headaches which drive him into fits of rage. And to reverse the effects, he requires the wings of 100 fairies. So he invades the fairy realms and freezes all the fairies in ice and sent Rhinox to gather them up. So Spyro must now venture through the fairy realms, restore all the fairies, defeat the Rhinox, and lastly defeat Grendel. This game is beautiful, and for the fact that it was the first attempt at using a free roaming isometric field style of gameplay for Spyro on the Game Boy Advance, it's pretty darn good. Number 8 was a tough one. I knew I wanted to put Mario Kart here, but which one? Super Circuit, DS, Wii, or 7? So in the end, I put Mario Kart Wii at number 8. And if you've never played Mario Kart at all then, I'm a little disappointed in you, Mr, Mrs or Ms viewer, as it's one of the best kart racer series around. Mario Kart Wii has no story, so we can safely skip that. This game means a lot due to the fact I got it on Christmas Day 2008. I remember unwrapping it and spending the next few days up until New Year's Day playing this non-stop. So basically, Mario Kart Wii is the sixth game in the Mario Kart franchise and the best in the whole franchise so far to me. It's the first to produce 
motorbikes and random player versus player racing and battles over Wi-Fi. The visuals are beautiful, the roster is brimming full of characters, and the different cars between weight classes is a clever gimmick. It's all very good, and I'm looking forward to Mario Kart 8 next year. So for number 7, we're jumping back to the PlayStation 2. We've got James Bond 007 Nightfire, and this game is another interesting one. It's the first ever James Bond game that isn't a movie licensed game, but a game with its own story for Bond to go through. Visuals are pretty average on this game, but this game has some fantastic levels, from sneaking into parties in Austrian castles, to driving your Aston Martin underwater, and even out of space with a freaking laser cannon in your possession. And the multiplayer is fantastic. Four player multiplayer plus four bots can turn into an awesomely fun match to the death. And if this game had been online enabled, it would have been one of the greatest around. Now, this game is special to me because I'd searched for it for months when I was 10 years old. And I walked into my local store and there it was. And because I was a 10 year old who absolutely loved James Bond, my fanboy mind was officially blown by this game at the time. Gran Turismo 3. Gran Turismo freaking free. I flipping love you. The first ever racing game I ever played, and it's thanks to this game I fell in love with racing games everywhere. There are too many cars and tracks to even count. The physics in this game were astounding for its time and still hold up well today. The visuals are beautiful and the racing events are awesome as hell. Gran Turismo 3 is probably one of the best games in the entire series in my opinion. So number 5 is quite interesting choice, and if you've watched my reviews you'll instantly recognise this little gem from a review I did not too long ago. That gem of course being Robot Wars Arenas of Destruction. Now as to how this game changed my life, if you've ever watched my reviews you'll probably understand this already, but if not I'll explain. You see back in 1998 to 2004 in the UK, Robot Wars was a heavily popular TV game show that had a massive cult following. I was and still am one of those people who follow the series throughout its entirety. I grew up watching the show, I've got the pullback figurines and this game to prove my worth as a devoted fan of the show. So imagine my surprise when I walk into my local game store as a 10 year old, not only to see James Bond on the shelf, but also a game depicting my younger childhood on every Friday night in a video game. Oh the beauty of it all. The visuals and the music are like the game advertises. Dirty, underground and mechanical mixed with the carnage that this game emulates from the TV show. This game is perfect for an evening of carnage, destruction and damage with no care for protection. Health and safety? Screw that junk! Number 4 is Pokemon Y. And why do you ask? <laughs> why? So Pokemon Y is special to me because it signifies how long I've been playing the Pokemon series for. Since 2003. 10 years of Pokemon. And because I love Pokemon, that's a big milestone for me. So I'm happy with that. Pokemon Y, however, is this stunning game. And it's the first fully 3D Pokemon game in the series. And Game Freak didn't fail to please at all with it. And now we have 69... Yeah, I know it's dirty, I just know, I know. Anyway, 69 new Pokemon. All in perfectly rendered 3D. Thank you, Game Freak. Thank you. So now, we're in the top three. And at the bottom of the trio, is Monsters, Inc. Scare Island. This game, I guess, if it was canonical to the films, would be in between Monsters University and Monsters, Inc. It basically allows you to follow Mike and Sully through their training to be top scarers for Monsters Incorporated. This game is actually pretty good. There's lots of environments from the city to the Arctic to the desert and they're all pretty well designed. Characters are good and the music is nice and fun to listen to. This game signifies the first ever PlayStation 2 game I've ever played and I'm pretty thankful it is because this is one great game Disney has made here. Second goes to the legendary Crash Team Racing. This game was the first ever Crash I ever played. And if you know me personally, you'll know how much I love Crash. 
Anyway, the reason that this has beaten Mario Kart Wii on the list is because of how it actually has a story. Yeah. So basically, the story is that Crash and friends must race each other to find out who is the world's greatest racer. That person will then be sent to face the currently undefeated intergalactic karting champion Nitrous Oxide. If you win, Oxide will leave defeated. But if you lose, he'll turn Earth into a giant parking lot. Now this game was amazing for its time and again still holds up today as what every kart racer should aspire to be. CTR is the most legendary kart racing game ever, in my opinion. The winner of this list by a long shot, and I knew this from the beginning when I made this list, is Toy Story 2 for the PlayStation 1. This, of course, is the first game I ever played in my entire life. And I am officially proud to say that. Toy Story 2 follows the events of the film, and it's just so true to the source material, you could actually never watch the film and understand the entire plot of it by just playing this game. The visuals are great, the story is great, the music is some of the most epic music ever created for the PlayStation 1. Toy Story 2 is just absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much for watching this very, very silly top 10 video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like, a comment, maybe share this video to your friends, and if you're feeling very generous seeing as it's almost Christmas, you know, then please do subscribe, because after all, tis the season to subscribe, fa la 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 And until next time, sayonara.